Becoming a blockchain developer is one of the fastest ways to change your career and land the dream job that you've always wanted. You know, blockchain is one of the highest paying fields in tech. In many cases, there's opportunities to work 100% remotely, and you get to work with some of the most exciting technology that's being built right now on the face of the planet. But people ask me all the time, like, how exactly do I make this transition? What are the actionable steps? Like, how much experience do I need? How long does it take? Well, I've made plenty of videos about that on this channel, but in this video, I actually want to bring on a guest today. So Andrew is somebody who's graduated from the blockchain bootcamp, and in less than nine months, has landed a job actually leading a blockchain team with some other jobs along the way. And one of the reasons I want to bring him on to do this interview is that you all can learn from this because there can be so many helpful tips and tricks where we reverse engineers Andrew's journey so that you can learn from these things and try some of them for yourself. So if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory, and I've helped thousands of people become real world blockchain developers. And so if you're trying to do the same, then make sure you smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you want to learn how to master blockchain step by step from start to finish, land your first blockchain job, then definitely head on over to adaptuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp to get started today. All right, so I'm super excited to welcome Andrew to the channel here today. So Andrew has uh, gone down a journey that I know a lot of you are trying to do, you know, change your careers and break into the blockchain industry. And Andrew reached out to me and I wanted to have him on the channel because this is a really inspiring story. You know, Andrew is somebody who was able to essentially, uh, you know, jumped into blockchain, you know, took the blockchain boot camp, and within 12 months, actually less than 12 months, he's been leading a, a blockchain team at a metaverse company as a blockchain developer, you know, fully remote job, like right at the center of what Andrew was looking to do. So what I want to do is uh, talk to Andrew and kind of reverse engineer this process so that you all can learn from this, you know, kind of figure out what are the tips and tricks that he did uh, because he pretty much did exactly what I tell everybody on this channel and I want to go through that and show you know how, how it worked for him so hopefully it can help you too so welcome to the channel Andrew thanks Greg thanks for having me and you know before we get started I just want to say I don't do many interviews or show my face on camera often so uh, this is a big moment for me in my personal journey so to you and anyone watching uh, thanks for helping me grow today yeah, yeah, of course. So uh, I want to start off now, Andrew. T tell me about the the position that you have now. Like, what are you doing uh, as a blockchain developer? Yeah, so I joined uh, Network, which is a metaverse company um, built on Unreal Engine, and I work as a my official title is director of product for the blockchain team, which essentially means I serve two main roles. I'm the team lead, um, where I get to uh, motivate um, and help develop and direct uh, the rest of the people on the team as well as serve as the product owner for our Scrum team, where I act as a conduit between stakeholders and partners and the dev team, where my blockchain development background really helps us come up with the right implementation. And even though I may not be writing all the code, I'm there planning it out and reviewing it. Um, and this experience of the last year helped me get prepared for it. Yeah, yeah, totally. That, that's awesome, Andrew. So I want to talk about your background before you got into this journey, because um, you know, a Andrew uh, didn't have a ton of uh, development experience before he started kind of going in the blockchain path. He can talk about some of that. He, he didn't have exactly zero coding experience. He can he'd been doing lots of other stuff uh, in the past, but really hadn't gotten to that level of starting his professional career in, in a way that most people would think. So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so I'm 33. I graduated college as a mechanical engineer. I worked as a project engineer for a ma manufacturing company. So no prog programming involved, but um, learned skills like project management and dealing with different types of people and some leadership training. Um, but my, my one year of coding experience is mostly self-taught. Um, I quit my job for one year and for six months, I taught myself PHP and also Swift to build iOS mobile apps, where I then um, uh, joined up with one founder and worked for three months um, on a mobile app where I also picked up some Ruby on Rails. So about a year experience total with about four months of a professional experience, but uh, nothing related to, to blockchain at all. Yeah, totally. And you were kind of telling me when we spoke offline here before, you know, you you, were, you had this background and uh, you were kind of trying to figure out exactly what you wanted to do. You knew, you knew you wanted to change your career into something where you could be fully remote, right? And you kind of got this mm -hmm. moment where uh, he was like, oh, I want to do blockchain and, and go down this path. So tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, so I got the I got the itch in February 2021. And like I said, I didn't have much of a computer science or programming background. So I took a couple of months and, and did this guide um, just to get the core concepts, you know, as an engineer, I kept hearing people say blockchain for everything. And as as, as an engineer, I know that that's not the case. It's right. got its pros and its cons, right? So I wanted to learn the core concepts of blockchain. And then on top of that, the core concepts of what came before blockchain, because I didn't know much about data structures and networking and cryptography and, and all the pieces that help me understand now why blockchain is great, why it's not great, because it ain't perfect. 
Um, but then it was once I got that core foundation where I was like, I'm ready to work on some practice projects. And that's where I came across the channel and started doing some videos. I did those like three hour ones and um, they were great, but they weren't deep enough for me. And that's where I was like, you know, do I pull the trigger on the boot camp? You know, I was, I had the money, so I was fortunate in that sense, but I wasn't sure. I was like, is this guy Greg scamming me? I have no idea. So I actually <laughs> came on, I came on the channel and I watched one of these videos, which is why I'm excited to be here and pay it forward because seeing somebody talk and then hearing their experience and being able to re relate to where they were at the beginning really set me over the edge. And like I said, it was one of the greatest decisions I've made. Helped me change my life. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. So, so, so I want, I want to kind of keep going on the journey here. So you got to that point, you jumped in, took the boot camp, completed that. And you were telling me a little bit before, you know, what I always tell everybody is like, you, you know, you kind of went down that path of, of dipping your toes in some of the, um, you know, the courses we have out there on YouTube kind of, cause that, that's, that's essential for a lot of people just try it out, you know, get your fingers wet or sorry, your toes wet with the programming languages. But then like, yeah, you're talking about, you need to take it up to that next level to get that sort of pro level project complexity where, where you can learn all those skills at a much higher level. And that can prepare you for the next step, which is creating your portfolio. So that's what I want to hear about next. Cause you, you did that too, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So I did the boot camp quick. I did it once through. And then my process was go back and try and do it with minimal references back. So I did that. And then, um, like you said, I wanted to build one more portfolio project before I started applying. So uh, the logical next step made was an ERC-721 token. So I did an ERC-721 token marketplace. I did ERC-2981 royalties. I had a payment splitter. Um, used the same front-end template from the boot camp because I had no real front-end experience, but it kept me moving yeah. on the blockchain stuff. And so that was the first piece of my portfolio. And that's when I started applying, uh, which I had, a, you know, four different companies I was involved with before taking this job. Um, and I can go into each of those because there's a couple interesting learnings about building projects and then um, hitting challenges along the way, too. Yeah, I definitely want to go into that. But but I want to stop right there for a second, which is, you know, people say, ask me all the time, like, hey, you know, I've, I've done this stuff. I mean, I've been through the boot camp. I've done some tutorials. Like I've created my portfolio project, right? I've done all that stuff, which is, you know, kind of the steps that I lay out. But I'm not really sure when I should start applying for jobs. Like I don't feel ready. Like I just, I feel like nobody's gonna take me seriously. But I always say like, once you've gotten to the point where you can create your own project on your own, that's the whole process of unguided development where no one's holding your hand because that's where you develop mm -hmm. those functional coding skills. Like once you've got that, you've put it out there, people can use it. And then you put it on a website that shows people that you've created that and you can open source the code. Like that's when you're ready. Like most people still are like, oh, I'm not quite sure. How, how did you feel? And then what did you find was your experience once you started you know, putting your name out there? Yeah, I was completely unsure. Like I said, I want to do one project. I, I bought the website template. I had those two projects on there. And that's that's when I started applying through LinkedIn. And for me to get over that hurdle, I said, even if I go through this process and what if, you know, maybe I can't do it or maybe I don't get the job, but at least I'll get the practice of interviewing. At least I know what they're looking for. My first project, I got stuck in a coding challenge. That set me off for the next couple of weeks to learn not only that coding challenge, but uh, to learn the next step above that. And you know what? I had another portfolio project at the end. So the, the time is worth it. I get I get the being scared and, and being cautious about it, but no one's saying you have to take the job. At least go through the process and have the decision. Right. Yeah. There's always that fear, I guess, of rejection and like the time it takes to go through all that. But I always say that's always really valuable learning because then you'll know what to go work Absolutely. on. You know, in your case, you're like, hey, I got I got an extra portfolio project out of it. This <laughs> that's great. That's great. Exactly. So, so tell me a little bit about how you started looking for stuff. I think you mentioned LinkedIn there. Um, you know, what, what's the tip here? Like what strategies do you take? How did you get traction? How did you actually get calls from people? And then ultimately, how did you find the job that you have now? Yeah, so I just, I used LinkedIn. I updated my portfolio website with my projects, but I guess the only little different thing I did on LinkedIn was um, I joined a couple, I applied for a couple jobs and they ended up me not being full-time jobs. So I worked with a couple different remote teams just building stuff for free to get experience. Um, and instead of just putting them on the website, I actually put them onto LinkedIn. And in the description, I named all the standards that I use, IPFS, ERC-721, 2981, um, just to show that you know I have proven with these technologies, if there's keywords, anything like that. Um, and I felt like I started getting more responses you know, as I started adding a little bit more detail. If you go on my page right. now, I've removed it all. But there was a point where I had all my projects broken out in technical detail because, you know, even a lot of the recruiters don't fully understand blockchain, but if you understand some of those key technologies, and like you said, you have those projects where you did from start to finish because doing a little component is not the same as, as delivering a full piece. So um, for me, it was breaking it down into those technical details and then proving that I could work on successful projects with teams, with remote teams, if you can make that happen for yourself. 
Yeah, totally. I think the keywords are huge because just, you know, using uh, yep. using keywords that people are looking for. So tell me about, about LinkedIn. So I just did a video on my channel about, you know, trying to optimize for LinkedIn and using that as a strategy. So were you mostly uh, uh, reaching out to other people on LinkedIn or were you posting content on LinkedIn? They were, you know, searching for you to you just update your profile saying you're looking. How, how did that work? Yeah, I'm a pretty uh, keep to myself person. So I, I don't post too much. But what I did was um, I just every day I was just looking at the open jobs on LinkedIn and I would just apply to any of them that seemed even somewhat relevant. Um, even if I knew they weren't perfect, um, I found that. Uh, excuse me, one sec. That's okay. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I lost my spot. <laughs> That's okay. So you were it's okay. You were saying that you were applying on LinkedIn. Um, yes. does it look just relevant? So so you were just direct applying. You weren't like uh, posting content, like seeing people reach out to you. Uh, did you get Correct. any inbound recruiter requests or anything like that after updating your profile? I did. I'm sorry. That's where I was going. So I updated my profile. Also, like I said, I kept updating my experience. I said that I was open to positions. I said I was open in uh, Chicago, where I am, and remote positions as well. Um, I didn't really reach out to recruiters, but I found that a lot of recruiters reached out to me. Um, right. The current job I took wasn't through a recruiter, but I just felt like as, as I was more active on LinkedIn, I felt like I was getting more nibbles or hits. I don't know if that's a psychological thing or if that's part of the algorithm, but it felt like it was going that way. No, it definitely is. Whenever you do things to change your LinkedIn profile, update it. Um, and then you start adding those keywords. Like it's, it's gonna, you're going to start getting more leads. And that's one of the reasons I made that video a couple of weeks ago. Um, and try to really stress that for other people who are looking that LinkedIn's a great uh, tool in the tool belt. It may not be the thing that gets you the job that you want, but at the end of the day, like you want options, you know what I mean? Um, and that's that's a great that's a great tool there. So um, before we finally get to the the position that you accepted now, um, you know, you mentioned there were some kind of stepping stones along the way um, where you were kind of working with some startups. I think when we talked offline, you mentioned that you also started contributing to a DAO. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Proof of good DAO. Um, Great project. I came across them in, in December of 2021, and I was just extremely aligned with the mission. Their mission is to make doing good deeds provable and profitable. Like, I mean, what a better use case for blockchain than trying to re-incentivize the world. So I applied for a senior blockchain position, knew I wasn't ready for it, went through three interviews, and I literally begged them. I said, just let me contribute anything, right? At that point, right. I was desperate because I wanted to contribute to what they were doing, but I also wanted to get my first code on the mainnet. I hadn't had that moment yet. Um, so I begged them to join. And then within a week, I found myself in weekly engineering calls. I was in DAO halls, working with different people on strategies. I'm learning about marketing and communications. And um, for me, that was as close to real world experience that I could have gotten at the time. And it made me a lot more confident going forward into my current role. I actually had a moment where I couldn't figure something out. And you know, working alone, you're either stuck, you figure it out some way, or maybe you get lucky. Versus, you know, joining up with the DAO and having that support system where not only could I learn what to do, but I learned what are the other ways to do it and why we chose this way. Um, so working with that remote team, amazing people. And if, you know, if you're looking to do something, it's a great place to volunteer uh, while also learning because that's what you want to do at the end of the day. Yeah, totally. And there's something you said in there that I want to kind of pick out too. You know, you, you said they had spots open for senior engineering roles and you're like, I'm not qualified for this, but I'm going to, I'm going to try anyway. You, you didn't come under the pretenses that you're a senior engineer, but you're still saying like, Hey, I want to contribute in some way. I may not fit this job perfectly, but like, what can I do? And I always stress that for, for people, which is like, sometimes people get, they get discouraged because they look online and they see job posts and they're just not qualified for, right? And I'm right. like, hey, hey, wrong, wrong answer, right? Um, because the fact that they're hiring somebody is probably an indication that they're going to hire other people if you're willing to hustle. Not everybody, right? Not everybody, mm -hmm. but but that's a that's a good sign in the first place. And the other thing a lot of people don't understand is that when when companies a lot of companies are paying to advertise jobs to show it to people. And in terms of like an ROI perspective, like they're only probably going to do that for like senior jobs in some cases, be because that, that's what their, where their real demand is. Um, right. Not always, but like that can be a, that, that can be a big factor too. But I think the point here and, and your, you know, your story is proof of this is just because someone, just because you don't aren't qualified for a job doesn't mean they couldn't use you somewhere. Exactly. And that's what I made clear in the, in the interview as well. You know, no, you have to know yourself, when you're going in? What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? You know, what can you offer? How can you fill those gaps, right? Because not, even when we hire for our team, not everybody has every skill set, right? You've got, hopefully you've got the T-shaped development, you've got the one vertical T and maybe something else. And those two combinations together make you a better asset. And if you can make that clear to a business, um, 
they'll at least be thinking about it, right? That's all you can ask for. And maybe you don't get the job today, but they might consider in the future as well. Yeah. Yeah, totally. hundred percent. So um, I want to get to the kind of point in the story where, you know, you, you got the job that you are now. So kind of recapping the journey here, you know, you were um, kind of getting in the space, you know, you decided to go full steam, took the boot camp, built your first project, built portfolio, started applying for jobs, you know, kind of uh, contributed a little bit kind of pro bono sounds like to some startups, uh, did some work with the Dow. And then now it's like the next piece in the journey is actually getting the job that you have now, or is there something else in between? No, this was it. It was the Dow. And then a couple of weeks later, I actually interviewed and, and got this position, which was super exciting. Awesome. And so before we get into the details of that, the timeline here is how many months after you completed the boot camp was it before you landed the job that you have now? So I completed the boot camp May 31st, 2021. My um, first day of working was January 31st, 2022. Awesome. Very cool. Yeah. About yeah. nine-ish months and like that. It's a quick, quick. Yeah, it's crazy. Like I said, my goal was to get a fully remote job within two years. And I got a fully remote job and exceeded where I was in one. Um, I just got yeah. really lucky with the people I came across. But as we were talking about earlier, you know, it's, it's so clear looking back what all the steps were. And that's why I'm glad to at least share my story. Your story will be different, but um, there's a couple of key things we talked about. And like you said, it, it really correlates a lot to what's, what's on your channel too. So I'm um, yeah. extremely thankful for that. Yeah, yeah, totally. hundred percent. So um, I, I want to, how, how did, I guess, how did you get the job that you have now? Like what, you know, what, um, yeah, I'll just let you kind of talk about that one. Yeah. So same idea. I applied through LinkedIn. Um, they were looking for a, a blockchain developer. Um you know, I looked at the description. I didn't fit everything, right? I was missing this full stack experience, but I still applied anyway um, and, and made that decision. I'd highlight some of my, my other skills that had become a little bit clearer to me after working with the Proof of Good DAO. Um, so I applied. There was a coding challenge. It was something I was technically able to do. Again, no front end experience, so I still use your template as I was going through. But I made that clear, okay. though. I was radically candid about it, saying I, I'm not a, a front end or a back end master, but I can do this blockchain stuff. I've got some project management experience and I can help you know, lead things forward. So um, I was lucky they were expanding the group at that time. I was one of a few people that were hired. Um, and I started off just being a smart contract developer, working on some closer to DeFi type of stuff, and then um, kind of progress forward from there. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Very cool. And I think that's great because, um, you know, uh, people get kind of overwhelmed with what you have to know in order to be really be job ready. And what I always say is, like you don't have to be a master. Like you need to be good enough to put get your foot in the door somewhere. And that's where right. like going through the boot camp, like getting that professional level project in your portfolio, building something yourself. Like like no like no, unless somebody was a master before then and just quickly reskilled into blockchain through that through that method. Like you're you're just not gonna have that. And so um, you know, going going through that and getting that spot is is gonna get you there because everybody at the end of the day has to be on this path of self-learning. You know what I mean? Like no yeah. matter who you are, what your technical skills are, in two years, nobody's skills are going to be 100% relevant. And so you're always like having to learn and, and change things. And, you know, people always ask me like, you know, should I go master like front end and full stack development before I get into blockchain? I'm like, absolutely not. Like you should go for the third on blockchain and learn this other stuff as you go. Because mm -hmm. like you were saying, like you were basically just using, I mean, I don't I don't want to, um, I don't want to, uh, 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 over over generalize this or over simplify this but you were saying i was kind of just tweaking what i already knew on the front end side i wasn't writing a ton of code from scratch does that does that sound accurate from what you're telling me yeah and i have no problem saying i made that yeah. very clear i have other skill sets right and even when yeah. my job if i need front end people there's other people on the team that yeah exactly that's and skill that, set right that's the beauty of it like, yeah that's what i say as i try to tell people is like like get good the blockchain stuff and then just get good enough at the front end to where you can make stuff work with it and then you've got plenty of options you can either uh get on a team or other people have those skills or you can just learn those skills like while you're working like the goal is to get there and get your foot in the door and get paid to learn i mean that's what really everybody does everybody's having to learn at the end of the day <laughs> oh absolutely yeah if you're not learning you're not paying attention <laughs> yeah yeah, hundred percent. Okay, so all right, you got the job now. Now you know you started the smart contract developer and progressed from there. Now you're leading this team. Um, so you got that through LinkedIn, just doing uh, d applying directly, and then they saw a portfolio, they saw your keywords, they saw your your projects, your site, um, all that updated stuff, and yeah, it worked. <laughs> Absolutely. No, and it works really great. And I'm lucky that I landed a really great company with Network and I work with amazing people. And like I said, we talk a lot of professional stuff here, but it was a good personal journey for me too. And like I said, I don't feel like I've worked a day since January 31st. It's actually yeah. kind of crazy. 
Yeah, totally. And you're you're 100 remote now too. You met that goal. Yep, 100 percent remote, just like everyone in the company. So, like I said, I'm getting ready to move home closer to family, which was a, a really a personal goal for me. So, being able to accomplish that is awesome. And like I said, um, can be very uh, efficient with remote teams as well because I had a lot of experience that I could draw into, which um, makes our team even stronger in the remote world. Yeah, totally. That's awesome. Yeah, very cool. Well, yeah. Um, yeah, I think that pretty much covers the journeys. I mean, you were able to accomplish this, you know, you know, in under a year of starting this journey, basically, you know, about nine ish months after finishing the boot camp. Um, you know, kind of really going. You, know, you mentioned that you weren't you were kind of weren't necessarily trying to follow everything, but how how your journey unfolded kind of ended up being the the pattern that we talk a lot about here. Oh, yes. uh, uh, on this on this channel. So before we wrap up here, is there anything uh, in particular that like, hey, you know, uh, for the people watching, like, like know this that I experienced, and hopefully this can help you. Like, any any tips? Can I do two two less tips? Yeah, here yeah, at the yeah, end? yeah. As much as you want. So the first one, I just want to share one experience that I had when I joined my imposter syndrome moment and what I did to to get over it. Like I said, I came in, I had blockchain experience, and on my third day, I'm being asked to build front-end dashboards and work on projects that are maybe 30% smart contracts. And I, I had the moment, Greg, where I don't know if you've had an imposter syndrome where I'm in this like downward death spiral talking myself out of being able to do this. Um, and I'm, I'm grateful that I took a moment to breathe. And that was my moment where I decided, okay, what can I do here to make up that gap? And it was, okay, maybe I can't do the front-end stuff, but let me plan out every step of the way. I can break them down into Jira tests, assign my own stuff to me, and then go back to, to stakeholders and say, okay, here are the gaps, and I can help you fill them. Just being able to reframe and take that different perspective of, because you're going to have that moment. If you're, if you're not having that moment, you're not pushing hard enough. So hopefully that can help. Take a deep breath and think about what you can do rather than what you're missing, if that makes sense. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's great because, yeah, I think... There's nothing that can perfectly prepare you for a real world job. You know, you got to just get good enough where you can get your foot in front of the door. And there's, there's always these multiple like leaps in a developer's journey. It's like that leap of like just getting in and like learning something that you've never done before, just in, from a tutorial side of things, which is really hard. And it just feels like it's, it's, it's sort of the next step in the stair step. Right. And then you're kind of right. on this plateau of slow progress where like, okay, I'm going to build something in like a more real world project. And that kind of ratchets you up a level. And then, you know, you, you ready to go build your own portfolio on guide and that kind of ratchets you up the next level. And then, you know, when you get to the job, it's sort of like you take two stair steps ahead. <laughs> you know you what I mean? Um, but there's nothing else that can get you on those next two stair steps up unless, um, you know, you just jump in and just do it, right? And yeah, you're going to get a lot of imposter syndrome. It's like, oh, they didn't know what they were doing when they hired me. You know what I mean? They made a mistake. Yeah. I'm, I'm, they're going <laughs> to find out that I'm a fraud and a, fa a phony, right? Uh, but that's how everybody feels when they get started for the first time. Um, and as long as, you know, you are totally transparent about what your capabilities are, they're, they're going to expect that as long as you're willing to put the time in and learn and, you know, hustle, that's, um, you know, that's all it takes. Exactly. Well said. Um, and my last yeah, one, not a, not a tip. It's just, uh, you know, mental health is something that's really important to me. So I just want everyone watching. Just remember you're a human being. When you set your expectations, remember that you're human. This isn't easy. You're trying to make change. It's going to be an uphill battle regardless of the tech stuff. So just hang in there. It's well, it's well worth the journey. Um, like Greg said, you have to figure, figure out who you are, apply some of these steps, and then um, I've experienced some of the happiest moments of my life. So at the end, I just want to say again, Greg, you know, thank you for helping me along the way. Of course. Yeah. Yeah, totally. That's awesome. Well, we'll go ahead and wrap it up here, Andrew, man. I really appreciate you reaching out. I'm glad we could do this video. Hopefully everybody, um, you know, got a lot of value out of this. Who's trying to take the same uh, journey. Maybe you're just starting, maybe you're thinking about taking this journey. Maybe you're somewhere along there, maybe towards the finish line even. Uh, so I hope there's something in this video that you found uh, super value, valuable. So you know, if you are trying to go down the exact same journey as Andrew did, you know, you can rewind this video and basically follow the same steps. You can find lots of other videos on my YouTube homepage with other interviews of people who took really similar, similar paths. Um, but yeah, you know, if you want to get started today, you can definitely go to the YouTube homepage, find those free courses there. You know, they like give me course, but they're totally free as some of the ones that Andrew did. And mm -hmm. if you like those, you know, and you want to take the next step, go for the throat, build that real world project, then definitely, uh, you know, head on over to adaptuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp uh, to create your own real world project, master real world blockchain skills, step by step, start to finish. So um, yeah, that's all we got. Uh, thanks again for coming on, Andrew. This was fun. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, and until next time, thanks for watching Daffy Diversity.